Battlestar Galactica reboot. Yes, if you were a fan of the series that came out in 2009, um, it didn't come out in 2009. It concluded its run in 2009. If you were a fan of that series, then uh, this should be an interesting one. You got to remember, this is this will be the third uh, rendition, th third attempt at Battlestar Galactica. You have the original 1978 TV series, mm -hmm. the 2000s one, and now one now the current one that's getting ready to be made, coming out on uh, Peacock. Uh, and it's going to be made. It looks like the executive producer is going to be Mr. the Mr. Robot creator. Right. So Sam Ismail. Nice. And so basically what's happening is, okay, so the big concern, I guess, from Sam making this is he doesn't want to step on Ronald Moore's vision or version from the early 2000s. So he's right. been working like in concert with him to make sure that his vision isn't messing up his vision. But Sam's vision is totally different than that last vision. Right. We're going to have three different versions of Battlestar Galactica. So we don't know if Starbucks going to be a dude, a girl, or an animatronic uh, an, sentient yeah. uh, dog person. Yes, from uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be some next level uh, weird. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Can I read what you wrote in here? He's, he wrote something interesting. He's like, pretty much ever since Battlestar Galactica concluded its TV run in 2009, there's been talk of some kind of reboot or remake. Of course, the sci-fi series itself was a reimagining of the 1978 TV series of the same name. But Roger D. Moore's new spinoff on the sci-fi story succeeded in serving as an allegory for post-9-11 America. Yeah, that's that was weird. I don't yeah. know if that, they say I, that, but... That's don't know what he's thing. talking about. That's I never saw anything about being a post 9/11 America. That's really I'm not sure good. he knows what it's talking about. Right. You know what the most interesting take is take is from this um so Sam is basically he won't tell anybody anything about what's what's coming out. They are trying to start filming this year, but what they're going to do is when they release this, they're going to try to do something different. This is what he's talking about. It's actually a very interesting plan. So instead of releasing it every week or all at once, like they do with certain series, like, you know, The Expanse is every week, is, is all at once. Mm -hmm. The Orville is, is, has been weekly, will probably be weekly. These guys want to do something different. They want to do, like, let's say there's a battle scene that goes across three episodes. They're going to, like, launch those three episodes at us so we can watch all three of them. Cool, cool. Then, I like that. All right. Right. Okay, but then maybe right after that, there's like a 20 minute intense internal thing that happens with one character. And instead of putting out a whole episode, they're just going to like give us those 20 minutes. Wait, wait, wait. That'll wait, be the next release. I don't like that. Uh, what? Yeah, and then maybe the next one will be just one episode. And maybe one episode that'll be instead of 45 minutes, maybe it'll be an hour and a half. Oh. So that's like this whole idea of putting it out. So that way, you know, they're not conforming. It's you had to know this was coming, because nobody has to conform now to standard network procedures. You know, forty-eight minutes, commercials inserted doesn't have to be that way anymore. So streaming services can do anything they want. You had to know something like this was going to happen. Yeah, but they shouldn't do that. We'll explain why. Um, well, because it's dumb. <laughs> Uh, because for 70 years, we have been trained to enjoy media, TV movies, okay. in a certain format, a certain time format. Now, it's evolved. Sure. I just watched a four-hour version of Justice League, and I liked it. So, it, yeah, there's, there's, there is uh, exceptions to the rule. But the rule... Being that, here's your story structure, here's your opening, here's your your underlying story, here's your freak of the week, whatever it is, here's your, here's your format, here's what to expect every week. Now, the story can change. We can write the story, we can do whatever we want, but having that expected format for people to choose their media wisely um, is not only expected by the fans by the viewer but it's also respectful to the viewer because 
there's a lot of content out there for them to choose. And either they can choose your content or they can choose content they don't have to work for. And let mm. me tell you something, that format makes the viewer work for it. And no. I ain't working for my entertainment. You know, Is the reason you I have stopped- to emotionally prepare for it? No, I mean, I don't want to have to try to figure out the timeline. I don't want to have to try to figure out, am I watching the right thing at the right time? Why was that 15 minutes? Why was that two hours? I don't really mm. understand, you know, I, I, I can't even plan my night around watching an episode of Battlestar Galactica. Like, so unless you're plan unless I'm planning on, on binge watching that thing and start to end, I'm going to have a hard time getting back into it. Here's the well, problem with making a, a, the, a, the audience work for it. Um, there's other options, right? Okay. I stopped, I stopped sailing the, the high seas. Okay. I stopped sailing the high seas, if you know what I mean. Back in the day, I stopped visiting websites with ships on them, pirate ships on them, if you know what I mean, Shane. You know what I mean? I stopped pirating content oh. when it became very easy. Oh, 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 I was totally lost. To lease my content. You a pirate ship? What's going on? When it became easy, when it became less work for me to spend 10 bucks a month at Netflix to lease that content, to lease said content. Right. Then it became, then it became, it was never about the money with the high seas. Um, it, it was in a sense that I had two options back then. Either you pirate it or you go spend $97 on a box set to watch a single episode, right? Okay. It wasn't reasonable. Both were work. But at the time, pirating it was actually a little less work than trying to find the box set and have it shipped to me or whatever. It was less work at home to just get that episode I wanted. Now, when they made it less work to go to Netflix and click a link, when it was that much less work, then the $10 was worth it for me not to have to work for my content. It's true. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. With this format, if they go to create, now, now if it's subtle, if it's subtle stuff, if they put out little like in between episode things with scenes that just add to it, that's fine. But if they embrace it as like a whole thing for like the format of their show, that means now I got to work to follow the story and I'm not interested in that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it is a different, I would say it's a different world and, and I would venture to say that you and I are in different age demographics than a lot of people. So maybe the younger generation, this would feel more natural to them. You know what? You know, and maybe that's what they care about. F it. The entire thing should come out as TikTok on TikTok videos. One minute clips. <laughs> the whole thing should come out of TikTok yeah. videos. One minute clips. <laughs> TikTok one minute clips. That's what I want to see. Forget it. The you problem see? is that yeah, the, 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 the problem see? is that Peacock doesn't want to do that. You know, you know why that uh, that that new uh, what's it called? Um, oh my God, Quibi. You know why Quibi died? Let me tell you something. I got Quibi, and I was like, Quibi. Why is it? There was an app last year that just recently died okay someone poured billions and billions of dollars into this app billions of dollars with a b okay and what they did was they were making um exclusive content they had the revival of reno 911 hmm. on quibi and it was on your phone and it was really cool because quibi had this thing where you can watch it vertically or you can watch it horizontal and when you change your orientation the show's editing and orientation changed because what they did was they filmed this thing in like in like uh, in like round uh, it was like so it's like a square uh, ratio but it was actually a round ratio so it was a big round circle so they can literally you can rotate your phone any way and you're still getting the whole show really cool and they had 15 minute episodes of Real 911 and 15 minute episodes of a couple other uh you know, originals, really good TV. They even hired some of the best writers and actors to create, like Seth, um, Seth uh, uh, Rogen, mm. and a bunch of people to create these really cool TV shows, right? Okay. And that thing lived and died in a matter of one year. Yeah. One year. And you want to know why? You want to know why? Because it was, it was named Quitty? Quibby. Because it was 15 minutes a piece. Even if the show had 
80 episodes. Each episode was 15 minutes, and it was only on your phone. I mean, in all fairness, I never even heard of it until right now. It was funny because they, oh. they advertised it at the Super Bowl twice. Really? Two Super Bowls in a row they advertised it. They spent millions of dollars. I definitely watched those. Golden so. Globes, Academy Awards. They have, they put so much money into making people aware of this service called Quibi that a year later was defunct, completely bankrupt. Huh. Because so many people, they spent so much money to get so many, but they even gave like month free, month long trials away. I got it and I actually paid for it for a couple months. Let me tell you something. Um, you couldn't watch it on TV. There's no Roku app. There was no, you know, mm. channel out there on, on Amazon Prime. You know, you could hook your phone up to your TV technically and watch it, but it it became a job. It was it was work. It was work yeah. for me to watch. It was hard to even follow the story because it was in fifteen minute chunks, and they did that because like no one's gonna sit down with their phone for longer than fifteen minutes. Well, guess what? Then maybe you shouldn't release it. Be releasing long form content then <laughs> only on the phone. If yeah, no I one's going to sit down for 15 minutes and watch a, 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 an episode of TV on your phone, then don't create content exclusively for your phone. It's not yeah, rocket you, science. You hear that? You hear that, uh, Peacock, NBC? $40 billion is what they spent on Quibi. $40 Whoa. billion. Dollars. And they were, it was just gone. Gone. Like that. So there you hmm. go. There's formatting for you. Don't change the format. Right? You can have longer episodes if you want. But don't leave so far outside the realm of normal programming that it becomes work for the viewer. Because what happens to you when you do? What happened to Quibi? Spend $40 billion. And you're yeah. out. Bankrupt. <laughs> and you know, okay. I want to see a good battle star. So, you know, try to follow. You want to add to it? Add little web clips and stuff. Like, and, you know, fine. But the, the, the episodes themselves should have a sort of standardized format. We're YouTubers. Nobody's online, right? We are nobody YouTubers, and yet even our videos on YouTube, on our Prime channel, have a format. It starts in a certain way. It has a little intro here, and it has this little clip, and we talk about this, and we tease this, and they, have, they, they follow a certain time frame between this much time and this much time. And you know what you're going to get. When you click on our channel, you know what you're getting. And we're just a couple of guys in a couple of extra spare bedrooms making videos. That's very true. Well, okay. Well, you've heard it here. Uh, Peacock, don't do it, man. Don't do it. Because Brian will make it known to everyone else. And you yeah. will have to suffer. I will lose uh, my mind with my 1,000 followers. <laughs> I will lose my mind. Um, anyway, so that's it. So get ready to hear more from Battlestar Galactica. Hopefully they start filming this year. But who knows when the COVID stuff will, will completely go away. You think there'll be COVID stuff inside the show? Like, no, are, are, what do you mean? Like, we're gonna start seeing masks? references to like COVID in sci-fi shows coming up. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, art always mimics life, so and vice versa. So I wouldn't be surprised. It, but also, I think there's gonna be a lot of escapism because it's been such a dominant factor in our lives for the last year that I think a lot of people are gonna be like, they aren't gonna want to talk about it no more. Yeah. You know, I think they're going to be like, let's let's do some fantasizing. Let's get away from reality for a bit. That's been the big problem the last year is we haven't been able to escape from reality. Thanks for watching. To see the full conversation, become a member of the podcast family. Use the link in the description below or go to our channel and click the join button. Select your tier and we'll see you at the next show. I've been waiting for you.